Hi there. Now in this video, what I want to do is look at simple lift style problems where we've got a lift, say of mass big M, and we've got a person, say of mass little m. What I'm going to be doing is showing you the type of diagrams we draw and working out the tension in the cable and the reaction of the person on the floor of the lift. So let's start first of all by looking at a lift that is in equilibrium or moving at a constant speed. There'll be no acceleration. So we've got the lift here and we've got the cable and there'll be an upward tension, let's say we call it T Newtons. And we've got the combined mass of the lift and the person, which you can see I've represented now as a block. In some questions, it could be a parcel or something like that that is placed on the floor of the lift. So the combined mass will be m plus little m, and that means the weight would be m plus little m all times by g newtons. Okay, so we may be asked to find the tension in the cable. So this would be typical diagram that we would draw showing that combined mass. And what we would do is resolve say upwards using Newton's second law force equals mass times acceleration. So what we've got is an upward force coming from the cable that tension of T Newtons and then we've got minus the weight of the lift and the parcel or person that's in the lift. So that's going to be minus big M plus little m. And that's times all by g. And that will be the resultant force. It's in equilibrium or it's going at a constant speed. So there'll be no acceleration. So this would equal zero. Now if I rearrange this for the tension t, then it's going to be big M plus little m times g. So that's how we would get that tension. Now you're also often asked to work out the reaction on the particle or the contact force on the particle resting on the floor of the lift. And if that were the case, then the diagram I would draw would be something like this. We ignore the tension now in the lift. We're just looking at the forces acting on the particle here. So we've got the reaction, say R newtons, and we've got the weight of the particle acting downwards, little mg newtons. So from this, I could say resolve upwards again. And if I resolve upwards, then I've got the reaction R minus the weight of the particle inside the lift. That's going to equal zero because it's in equilibrium. There's no acceleration. So rearranging this, we can get the reaction acting on the particle. R will be equal to mg. Very basic, OK? But really, what we tend to be asked is what happens, what is the tension in the cable and what's the reaction when the lift is accelerating up or accelerating down? So let's have a look next at when the lift is accelerating up. You'll notice that I've called the tension in the cable T1 now. We've got the acceleration upwards of A and the weight of the lift that's with the particle inside. That's going to be again big M plus little m all times by G. So when it comes to working out that tension in the cable again, we'd resolve upwards, so in the direction of acceleration. So resolving upwards, what we've got then is T1 minus the weight, the combined weight of the particle in the lift. That's going to be m plus little m times g. And that's going to be equal to the mass, which is m plus little m and that's all times by the acceleration. So if I made T1 the subject, then T1 would equal all of m plus little m g plus, and then we've got all of m plus little m times a. 
And can you see that this tension T1 is greater than the tension that we've got here? Because we're adding on this extra term here. So we'll just put that in here. Note that the tension T1 is greater than what it would be if it were in equilibrium. Now, what happens when we've got to consider the reaction on the floor of the lift when the lift is accelerating upwards? Well, the diagram would look something like this. I've labelled my reaction R1 and we've got the weight of the particle inside the lift acting downwards, little mg. So for this, we would resolve in the direction of acceleration. So I'd resolve upwards and resolving upwards, we've got R1 minus mg. That's our total force then. Acting upwards is equal to the mass, which is m times the acceleration. And if we rearrange this for R1, we therefore have R1 equals mg plus ma. And can you see that when we compare this reaction to what we had when the lift was in equilibrium, because we're adding this term on the end, it's going to be greater. So we just put this here. Note that R1 is greater than R. And you should have experienced something like this, maybe in a lift, if it was to accelerate fast, okay? You'd feel yourself driven into the ground. Uh, you'd feel that force coming up from the floor, if you like. You'd also experience this in a fairground ride, say, if you're sitting on a seat and you're accelerated upwards, you feel yourself driven harder into your seat. Let's have a look next at what happens if the lift is accelerating down. This will be my typical diagram. The tension in the cable, I've labeled T2 newtons. We've got the acceleration downwards and we've got the combined mass of the lift and the particle m plus little m g acting downwards. So again, if we resolve downwards, apply Newton's second law downwards, force equals mass times acceleration, then this time we've got all of big M plus little m times g, and then minus the tension in the cable, T2. That's my resultant force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. The mass then is big M plus little m, and the acceleration is A, acting in the downward sense. And if I rearrange this for T2, we therefore have that T2 equals big M plus little m times G, this term here, and then subtract that term minus big M plus little m times a. And you'll notice this time when you compare this tension here with the original tension, we're taking off this term. So we notice this time that when the lift is accelerating downwards, then that tension T2 is less than the tension it would be if it were in equilibrium. Now let's look at the forces acting on the particle on the floor of the lift. We've got the reaction, which I've called R2 newtons. And we've got the weight of the particle acting down, little mg newtons. So it's accelerating down with acceleration A. And so if we resolve, this time downwards in the direction of acceleration, then we've got the overall force downwards is going to be mg minus the reaction, R2, and that's going to equal the mass times the acceleration. And this time, if we make R2 the subject, we end up with R2 equals mg minus ma. And when we compare this to the reaction we had when the lift was in equilibrium or moving at a constant speed, notice we're now taking the mass times the acceleration away from mg. 
So what we have here is that that reaction, we'll just say note here, that reaction R2 is less than R. So if the lift accelerated down, we would kind of feel lighter on the floor. Our stomach might well turn over. And again, you'd notice this if you're in a fairground ride, for instance, sitting on the, a seat of some ride and suddenly it went downwards. You'd feel very light on the seat as if you're going to shoot out. OK, so I hope that's given you some idea of the type of diagrams we draw with these simple lift problems, the equations that we form and how we go about finding then the tension in the cable and any contact force with a particle on the floor of the lift. All right?